everyone, welcome back to my show, 9AMD Beverly Hills Fusion of Science and Beauty. And again, I have a guest who I've had before on the show and I will keep having him on over and over again because he's doing some very, very amazing things. I think he's so crucial to the um, anti-aging and regenerative movement um, in terms of where we, have, where we were, where we've become, and what we're headed for. And so again, I would love to welcome uh, Dr. Mark Berman. Thank How you. How are you? Great to be back. Thank so you. where did you just come back from? We were in New Jersey. Uh, my, myself and my partner, Dr. Lander, uh, yeah. were visiting with a cryobank that we're working with. Yeah. So we're putting a nice little cells on ice cryobank business together. So can we, let's, let's talk about that. So one of the things <clears throat> has been is, is that, you know, you, you utilize the stem cells as you have the procedure, right? Yes. But it would be really nice to get your own stem cells and to be able to bank them or so to speak preserve them so that you could use them at a later time, right? I have no doubt that banking your cells is really going to be the way to stay healthy for a longer period of time. Yeah. Um, fundamentally, we're just a bunch of cells and eventually yeah. we run out of cells. Yeah. But if you have your cells on ice and you can bank them and even expand the numbers and potentially get them back over time, you can replace a lot of your body parts by replacing the cells of those body parts. So how do you, how do you bank them? How, like, well, how does the thing work? So let's say the person comes in, says, I want to bank my cells. We've got a great, easy procedure. Yeah. For example, okay. say you came in and you want to bank some cells. Yeah. You're talking about a 15-minute procedure, and then you go back to work. But where do you, so what do Here's you do? what would happen. You would come in. You've already gone through the informed consent, all the right. information. Everything's provided. Right. And literally, after you check in and we check you, we would bring you into the operating area. We'd isolate a small area in your body, which is going to have a little bit of fat. Mm -hmm. On you, it's going to be hard to find, but we'll find <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. And we only need really one or two ounces of fat. And it's all done under a local anesthetic. One it's two basically ounces is usually painless. about like what? About is a syringe? Right. right. Two about tablespoons is an ounce, an ounce right? Yeah. So four tablespoons is about two ounces. One big and syringe. That's it. That's, that's all it. we need to bank. Right? And so what happens by going to the bank? Here's what happens. So I, your cells go on. So immediately, what you get? I'm sometimes trying to figure this out. You get the cells, right? Right. So now what do you do? Immediately, you like put them in the uh, on ice, or it, what? It, first of all, the cells are packaged. Yeah. They're sent to the laboratory. The okay. laboratory then produces the stromal vascular fraction, okay. which is basically everything without your fat, everything but the grease. Right. And then they can actually bank that. Now that's banked in minus 190 degrees Celsius. It's in liquid wow. nitrogen, okay? So it's really suspended. Now, what they can actually do, and we have to go through studies and get this all approved, yeah. but they can actually take a sample of your cells and then expand them. That means to duplicate over and over again. So maybe from 500,000 cells, I can give you back another 20 million cells. And would you do that when you need them, or would you do that just otherwise? So well, what we've been doing yeah. so far, all of our investigational work is on people who need the cells. They have arthritis or different conditions, yeah, yeah. COPD, whatever is a cellular damage we're looking to repair. Yeah. But aging and dying is also cellular damage. Mm -hmm. So in a way... The future may be that this is a little fountain of youth, that if you can keep rebuilding your vital organs yes. with your own cells, you can sustain life for a much longer time and be healthy doing yeah. it. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things is about stem cells and banking of stem cells. There's so many um, FDA issues involved with all of this. Um, I think it's very important for the audience to know just how credible you are and what kind of credible organizations that, you, that you're working with. So can you share with us about um, you know, just which organization that you are involved with and how you are even talking to the FDA. To, you know, you told me the whole story about you actually talking to one of the FDA guys and so forth. So share it with that because I think it's so important that credibility um, comes into this field. And so tell me, tell well, me what, what's what. You know, this all started about. because as plastic surgeons, we knew we could take fat, remove the cells, yeah. add them back to the fat, fortify and make bigger breasts. But I always thought, gee, if you can do that many cosmetic procedures through the roof, the therapeutic use is for SVF. Yeah. So as a cosmetic surgeon, I'm great at doing liposuction, producing the cells, but I need a team of uh, doctors from different specialty, orthopedists, urologists, cardiologists, internal specialists, right. radiologists. And so we built up a, a multi-specialty team. 
And so Dr. Lander and myself, we formed the California Stem Cell Treatment Center, mm -hmm. and just organically it grew into a worldwide network. So we have doctors using our same equipment, our same techniques, recapitulating what we're doing, which is really exciting. Yeah. Just because I get a result, if somebody else can't get the same result, that's ridiculous. Yeah. But everybody's getting the same kind that's of results. Awesome. Yeah. So being able to reproducibility is huge. That's exactly. And then the FDA has issues that they're responsible for. And their primary purpose with cells and your own tissues is to prevent the transmission of communicable disease. Yes. In the process of doing that, the FDA has set up uh, an area of regulation where they have the authority over your cells and tissues. Mm -hmm. So they set up a number of points and they mm -hmm. said, look, unless you're doing certain things, you have to go through our approval process. Right. We basically do a surgical procedure and we're compliant with the FDA, so we don't really have any issues. Right now, we are working with the FDA because we're going to submit and we had a pre, what's called pre-ID meeting with them just a week ago. But we're submitting an application to show our system can be good for knee arthritis. We're just starting out with right. a simple claim. Right, right. And, and so we're not, you know, we're not one of these groups flying under the radar. We're right but in the that's what, and I think face that's, of everybody. That's, that's what I think is so important to point out. Also, um, tell us about when the, in, the, in terms of you banking the stem cells and um, talk about that organization that you're involved with. So for, for a number of years, we've been trying to set up a bank program. And finally, yeah. because of a couple of different issues, we ended up working with American Cryostem. They've been solely interested in working towards banking adipose-derived cells. Mm -hmm. And so they have all the uh, standard operating procedures in place to do... And that's important, standard operating procedures. This company, and how, and this company's been around for quite some time. They started back in 2008 yeah. with the primary goal of working with adipose-derived cells so that they could bank them, eventually expand them, provide them back. Right. Now, all that stuff has to be FDA compliant. Exactly. And so their, their system is set up uh, impeccably well. And so they've got all the I's dotted, all the T's crossed. They're doing all the right things. Of course, we're going to have to do studies to show sure. that it's safe. But it's got to start somewhere, and exactly. this is the best way to start. The best way to start it is in a very credible environment where, where you're, all your I's and T's are crossed, where you've got a standard operating procedures, and those are the people that you actually associate with. I'm I mean, putting my cells in the bank yeah. as soon as I can. This is yeah. what I've been waiting for. People say, well, are you using your own stem cells? They go, I haven't needed them yet. Yeah. But now I'll start banking my cells. And hopefully we'll get an IRB approved protocol so we can start expanding, increasing yeah, the numbers yeah, of yeah. cells and giving them back. Yeah. So I want to start my own anti-aging program with cells. You know, yeah. It's great. The things that you can give me right now are great. They keep my cells healthy. healthy. But ultimately, I need something to replace my Absolutely. cells. And that's, the, that's really the whole puzzle. Take good now care of your cells and replace them. Just out of curiosity. Do those when the when you expand the cells and you and you and you let's say you put them back in, um, they're gonna where do they migrate? Do they migrate to only the areas of inflammation, or they're going to be able to go into even normal tissue? Well, that's exactly the point. Right now, your cells are traveling all over your body, yeah. and when part of your body starts to deteriorate, they give off signals. Yeah. We call them cytokines or growth factors. Right. So those signals will signal the cells that you have right now to repair that. Yeah. But we run out of those cells. Our bone marrow just doesn't produce enough. Yeah. And we get so much deterioration that eventually we just stop working. Yeah. I mean, yeah. why do people die? Why don't they live to be because, 120 because years old? Because the cells stop dividing. Well, we, we know now that sometimes there are things that we can do to extend, extend the, uh, what we call the Hayflick limit of cell division. Um, and that's through, again, through uh, bioidentical hormones, nutrition, certain nutrients, and so forth. But ultimately, you still reach a point where the cells just stop dividing. And um, so you can't sustain, uh, you know, any more cell division. Mm -hmm. And that's when the stem cells come in, right? Yeah, so if you put a cell in contact with a cell that's dying, that dying cell will signal that new cell to turn into what it was. Yeah. What, and they'll become a new healthy cell. Yeah. So you're actually, and so that's the ultimate rejuvenation. Honestly, that's like the ultimate. And that's why I want to come up with a new term. <laughs> I can't stand anti-aging. Well, I want to be 150 yeah, years but old. You know what? But I, what but else I, can we call it? But I think, <laughs> the, I think we need to also say, the reason I say it's anti-aging and rejuvenation and or regenerative medicine, I think the best thing is regenerative medicine. The reason I like to put anti-aging is, is because 
it is a term that's already widespread and exactly. accepted. So by the time we change billions of people's viewpoint <laughs> on anti-aging, and we're, then we start introducing regenerative medicine, we're already going to lose, we're going to be behind the eight ball. So that's why in, in, in the purpose in my mission statement was I did include anti-aging, but I also put there and regenerative medicine. So I say both of those things because it's, I want people to start thinking of those things together. So that, so that we don't have to lose ground in saying, okay, now we've got to start a whole regenerative medicine movement or a healthy aging movement, and then people are still getting into anti-aging. Across the world, you know when you travel, everybody's into anti-aging clinics and anti-aging this and anti-aging spas and anti-aging, even the nail clinics are anti-aging. Yeah. You've got anti-aging genes. Clothing is anti-aging. <laughs> so anti-aging is a word that's used just I guess we're stuck much. with we're it for a while. We're stuck with it, but you've got to have another uh, word with that, alongside with it. That's what I think. Okay, and, I'll stay on the yeah, anti-aging so team for a while. Exactly, just for a while. So um, when are you, uh, uh, tell me one, just before you go, tell me just one interesting case that you just recently did and um, uh, that you just, uh, besides the one, um, in, in terms of rejuvenation. Uh, reju uh, hmm. Just out of, re not a serious case, Tell me, because a lot of women are coming to me and they're saying, I want to get my fat transferred. I want to have, you know, do some things as a rejuvenating procedure. Just before, just for a few minutes, if you can, before we conclude, tell me a little bit of some of the rejuvenating procedures. Well, two minutes. Yeah, I'll, just I'll just minutes. tell you. I exactly. think we've been treating the aging face all wrong. It, yeah. Obviously, everybody's into fillers now, but we've wanted. been using fat with stem cells in the face now for a number of years. And finally, I think people are starting to understand that my face is not older looking because it's sagging from gravity, I'm losing volume. I never had bags under my eyes. This camera probably showing a nice big but, bag under my eye. But, but it's a 3D, it's a 3D. Yeah, so what is it from? It's loss of volume in my cheeks. So you don't have to make somebody big puffy cheeks, but you have to lift the skin up just a little bit right. and restore the natural position of the skin. Our faces are three-dimensional, and as surgeons, we've failed the public because we've been doing facelifts that pull the skin up yes. and pull it back. Instead of restoring the anterior contours, we're decreasing the anterior projection of the skin. Just the opposite of what you want to do. I'll give you another little bonus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know the neck starts sagging? You yes. know why? My neck muscle isn't growing. I'm losing volume in my jaw, especially around the masseter muscle, yeah. and in the cheek. So as I lose volume here, that translates down to here. If I build up this volume just over the jawline lifts yeah. the whole neck back up so the things that we've been doing when we do a facelift we undermine the skin and pull the muscles back we distort the face that's why the smile ends up getting pulled like that's that what I've seen. See, that's people very look unnatural yeah. it's very unnatural looking that's what i love about you is you've recognized that and what is your ultimate is your pre fat back right you're putting stem cells we're trying back. to return cells back to the face yes the face does lose cellular yeah. ability yeah. elasticity yeah. But it get, comes back even with a fat graft because some of those yeah. stem cells get into the skin and improve the elasticity. See, I mean, that's, isn't that amazing? Listen, I know we're running out of time. Thank you so much for coming back on the show. And um, I'm bringing you back on. Okay. Okay? So Whatever thanks again. Whatever you say. <laughs> thanks so thanks, much. Thanks, Nina. And uh, this is 9MD, Fusion of Science and Beauty, and we'll be back next week.